What are microservices and why are they so popular? Let's discover it in the next five minutes. A microservice is an application responsible for a subdomain within the context of a larger system. Imagine developing a software system for a large online retail business. We could have a microservice focus on the management of the user accounts, while other components would cover other areas of the business like product catalogs, order, etc. The main goal of a microservice architecture is to be able to develop and operate independently the different services within the system. As a result, an organization can employ multiple teams and assign each team to a specific domain or feature. This way, rather than implementing features sequentially, we can parallelize the work and reach out targets in a shorter amount of time. By deploying services independently, we can optimize the utilizations of physical or virtual resources. We can deploy a larger number of replicas of those services that need to handle a lot of requests or computational load. Another characteristic of microservice architecture is their elasticity. Our software system could experience spike of traffic because of a sale or a particular event to which we can respond by adjusting swiftly the number of replicas serving requests. Microservices are often compared to monoliths. In a monolith, the entire system is shipped as a single application. All domains are implemented in one code base, and it might be difficult to introduce new teams and keep code ownerships and responsibilities well defined. This can lead to disagreements and a lot of time wasted in meetings. On the operational side, monoliths are less portable because of their size. That makes the system less elastic. It's much more expensive and difficult to deal with spiking traffic because to increase capacity, we need to deploy more replicas of the heavy application we built. With this in mind, we might think that a microservice architecture is always superior to a monolithic one. But that's not true, because microservices have their own set of complexities that sometimes are even harder to solve than those you face in a monolith. The main challenges are domain integration, networking, and observability. In an ideal setup, a microservice is capable of handling requests for a particular domain or feature in isolation. However, things get more complicated when a particular business function spans across multiple domains. In this scenario, microservices need to interact over the network through APIs, RPC, or messaging. This increases the design and implementation complexity, especially when dealing with failures. Thus, we are forced to adopt several patterns to ensure system resiliency. A possible approach is to use orchestration. In this case, a service implements a workflow to coordinate interactions with other microservices. This approach is very intuitive, but it gets complicated when you want to ensure consistencies across the different domains. An operation might fail in the middle of a workflow. In this case, we need to use patterns to retry the operation, resume the workflow, or in the worst case, to compensate for the failure. Another approach is to use choreography. In this case, we remove the central point of control and we let services react to events or signals. This approach favors greater independence of each microservice. However, it's more difficult to visualize the flow of data and understand the effect of failures in the system. This is because there isn't an explicit relationship between the different components. From an operational side, microservices are even more complex. It's much more easy to deploy a single or possible two instances of one monolith vis-a-vis -vis hundreds or thousands of services. The reason why the popularity of microservices increased in the last year despite the challenges is because of the rise of solutions and technologies that reduce the barrier to entry. Kubernetes, containers, and the entire cloud-native landscape have been instrumental to the process since they democratized the management of isolated workloads and solved issues like persistence, networking, CI-CD, and many more. As you can see, the full CNCF landscape is incredibly vast.
In conclusion, when should you use microservices? In my opinion, microservices are fit for those scenarios when you need to build a large system, possibly with the help of multiple development teams. The level of expertise required to build a microservices system is way higher than the one you need to build a monolithic application. You need to make sure that you have the right resources in terms of skill set and finance. Microservices are very expensive. On the other end, like an expensive car, they are able to deliver superior performance and scalability. If you enjoy the content, like and subscribe. You can leave questions in the comment section below. It motivates me a lot. Thank you and see you next time.